<laughs> Monday, January 23rd, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Well, we have a little more strength than I was originally expecting. And it is time to consider that the last shoulder low may have been made in this large head and shoulder bottom I've been talking about all along in the stock market indexes. So what have we got? First of all, I always start out with the S&P 500. And here is the daily data charts, same symbol, little less data here. We've got the October low, the rally since, the downside correction in December, beginning of January. And that could have been the last shoulder low. There aren't any other resistance levels above us to stop this rally. In fact, we are, in fact, let me change screens here real quick. At the moment, we're dipping down a little bit, but we're still up 4.8 on the day, and we need to start dropping below 400, basically, if we're going to see some follow-through weakness. Otherwise, and this is late for me to make my recording at 1130 California time when an hour and a half of trading is left. If we start to break below 400, well, we're still higher on the day by about three points, but that's not very much. And three points can come and, come and go in five minutes, sometimes less, maybe a little bit more, but not very long period of time it would take to go up or down five, uh, three points when the market's in a hurry. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm just saying I'm, I'm watching out for that because my original expectations were nowhere near as friendly or bullish as we have just seen in the last two days. I did expect that the market was going to come back up to the low 390s at least to reach some resistance. And then we were going to come up to about 393, which we did. But yesterday, it didn't stop there and close at 395 and a half which was the 200-day Dow Theorist long-term investor moving average. Normally, when you cross above that moving average, you start a long-term bull trend. But most people, and I think very wisely so, want to see a day or two or three or four, whatever, of strength after the crossing of the trend line follow through. Last time we were above it, it did not follow through and drop right below it immediately and cause that last shoulder low, we think. Uh, happening in fact can i grab this uh yep so i'm going to do this for the moment and it looks like the shoulder head which was october 13th and shoulder low again may have happened another comment today's rally high and the s p 500 is right smack up against the neckline which is the heavier thick thicker blue cyan uh, trend line this is a neckline it's across the two highest levels, the one before the head and the one after the head. And crossing that on a closing basis should be a breakout that will start a bull market. And I'll get to the minimum upside objectives tomorrow, probably, because it's significant. It's probably going to be the bull market of 2023. I think it will. So my quest in the last couple of weeks was, are we going to see more of a correction which would have been, and still is, uh, likely timing-wise and price level-wise. So again, if this is the last shoulder low we have seen, and I'm going to show you the DIA and the Qs and the Russell 2000 with this as well, they've all got essentially the same formation as you should expect. Um, so closing above today's high significantly will be a breakout. It could do it on a gap. That would not be uncommon, a breakaway gap. It should do it on higher volume. And it should be a very big up day, which I have a little trouble believing is going to happen, but it might. Just, you know, we've only had two decent up days in a row relative to the average two range in the last, you know, month or two. Um, but it sure as heck can go up 10, 15 points in a single day, which would be what I'm looking for on a bullish breakout. So, and my minimum upset objective, by the way, would be in the ballpark of the all-time historic highs. I'm going to say around 480. And that's just eyeballing this. I'll get to exact objectives tomorrow. Let's look at, and oh, by the way, and if this fails for some reason today, again, I got an hour and a half left. That's plenty of time to do quite a bit. And drops back down and gets very weak, like closing only a point higher or two at the most, let alone making new lows for the day and closing lower than the previous close, last Friday's close. 
that would be a false breakout and it would be a washout of buy stops with a normal type of bearish reversal, but pretty significant. And I would be back on track again, looking for a low around the end of January that is down in the ballpark of a bit below 380, 370, something like that. But we don't have that. We have a strong market. It's pretty firm. It's still up almost five points for the day. One last quick peek here at the one minute. And it, it held on the break for the moment. Didn't get below that uh, 400.30 so far. But hey, let's keep an eye on it. Next, the um, Dow Jones ETF, the DIA, has a neckline that is upper slanted. It is the furthest away from its neckline than all three or four of the indexes that I watch. And I do watch the Russell 2000, but I don't talk about it all that much. But today I will. So this is a double bottom, which is the head of the formation for the DIA. The lows are basically exactly or you know, the same date, June 17th for first shoulder, but not a single October 13th, which is this low here. But instead, it's a little double bottom over a couple of weeks. Same thing. It doesn't really matter what. Uh, reversal of formation just as long as the market turned and that's that now we have to get above 350 and maybe a little higher if it takes a few more days to have a bullish breakout and it will be in an area of resistance and it may be overbought so this is going to be a problem uh, if it goes straight up for a couple more days it's going to get overbought and that's not typical we'll have to see what happens needs to go through that neckline fast and furious now guess what Ladies and gentlemen, we have a neckline break on the QQQs. Its neckline has been broken, and the long-term bear trend line, which had, which had about four points on it, at least three good ones, and, and probably four, um, that trend line is broken. We are up against a little resistance, and we have not made new highs yet for multiple months, which some of these other indexes are relatively close to. So the QQQs uh, are getting very close Plus, they broke the neckline. So, and it's not overbought yet. But frankly, we did get overbought on the rally high only an hour or two ago. So, yes, it has turned yellow on the daily chart and yellow on the RSI chart on the bottom. That's what that is. It's my custom or liquor reversal um, relative strength index, ER RSI. It got overbought. So, it turns the color yellow on the price chart as well. If it was going down sharply, like at the bottom, it turns yellow because it got oversold. That's exactly what it's meant to do. So I have some problems being overbought. We'll see if it can hold up and follow through in the next couple of days. This, at the moment, looks like a legitimate bullish breakout of the head and shoulder bottom in the QQQ, which, again, my minimum upside objectives, it's very, very good. So it's not too much point in talking about it at the moment. It's you know a test of the high of the bull market. We topped out on January 4th, I believe, of 2022 and started the bear market for one year and basically a year. Here is the 2000, the Russell 2000. The double bottom is the first shoulder low and the head of the formation. It's a double bottom. It can't be a head and shoulder because these two support levels are about the same over a few different months. We just have to call it the double bottom. But the body parts were almost there. If this first low back in June wasn't quite as low, I could have said it was a shoulder. The bottom line here is you've got a trend line across the tops. It would have been the neckline. It has been crossed a few days ago. We did have a bearish engulfing new short sale signal at, at resistance. I pointed that out a few days ago. That was uh, That was Wednesday of last week. So this has not been canceled out yet. We need to cross not only the neckline, which it's done now the second day, but we need to get above this red resistance level, uh, which I'll expand to the right a little bit. And they're right there on a closing basis, which would be uh, 190 plus, 191 plus. Then we've got something really going here as far as bullish markets are concerned. And I do want to stress, even though I was looking for a break, and I didn't get it so far. Uh, we might be getting it. Look at here, 400.33 again. So we are about to make a new low for a few hours on the S&P. That could be interesting. Let's see how far down it carries, if it carries at all. But that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. You've got the 
stock market index is trying or succeeding in breaking trend lines, the big ones, the one for the last full year. Necklines, in some cases, still in a little resistance, not clear quite yet. Nothing is completely in the um, free zone, so to speak. The QQQ looks like it's closest to doing such a thing. Um, and um, that's it. We just have to wait to see how this follow through occurs. Uh, I'm not going to chase it up yet. After a breakout, you usually, very often, not always, get overbought. And there's a technical correction back down close to the neckline or down to the neckline. That's where I would like to be a buyer in a few days if we do have a breakout. And that's a lot safer. The risks are smaller and the rewards are greater. We almost always have some sort of retracement. So I'm going to wait a little bit, a little patience. Okay, let's look at futures. Um, I'm going to scan through these pretty quickly because we don't have any new signals uh, unless it happened in the last 10 minutes today. And we still overbought on gold. So I wouldn't chase this up. I'm looking for a sell signal. It looks like it's losing a little upside momentum. Next chart. I bullish long term on gold. We have this head and shoulder top building in orange juice. I said so on the day that we had the rally high that made the shoulder. It got overbought as well. Today, we're basically unchanged or up a hair, but that's the first time in four days. So I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. We need to cross that neckline going down, maybe gap below it, et cetera, et cetera. Everything the same except upside down that I was talking about relative to the S&P. Next chart. Bearish engulfing in soybeans last week, and it's working great. Uh, we popped back up on a retracement the next day and headed Tierra del Fuego, headed south, land of fire, southern tip of South America. Uh, nickname. So uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. This is doing just fine. I think we're going to come down to about 1470, 1469, 68 in the next couple of days. Next. Overbought, neutral, looking for a minor downside correction in an area of resistance. Next, we have the E-mini, same commentary, of course, as the SPY, but this is the futures contract. Even though it's a futures, it's stock market index as well so that's why it's in this group of futures now october 13th was the october low for all of the indexes essentially and it worked like crazy that is a green bullish buy signal for my automated er buy uh, trading system er signals so uh i have to start talking about being bullish and abandon that expectation of a dip in the next couple of weeks um let's see what follow through we get here next we have a bearish engulfing a few days ago in platinum. It's working great. We had one little update yesterday, a little bit more today, uh, but we're still well below the original short sale price levels for the trading system. Next, um, looking for a little bit lower levels. Close wasn't very strong, although it was a little above the support. We did break the support. That's a big crack in the granite, so to speak. So I'm looking for a bit lower, probably in the ballpark of, I would say, 22. Next chart. Um, sugar, head and shoulders top could be forming last shoulder high last week. I talked about it and it's still looking very feasible. So let's see how this last shoulder acts at this particular point. It's going to go sideways a little bit or straight down if it's a head and shoulder top. Next, uh, bond futures dropping again. That implies short-term rates are going up a little bit, but the stock market doesn't seem to pay much attention to it on a yesterday and today basis. So something else is undermining, um, well, not undermining, but affecting the overall market. That's obviously bullish expectations. By the way, one of my old saying is markets move on expectation, but reverse on realization. It's the same thing as buy the rumor, sell the news, except I cover both bullish or bearish trades, not just buy the rumor and sell out on the news. Next chart, 10 year notes. Same commentary as bonds, looking for a long-term base building activity to continue, looking for a little bit more of a dip in the next week or two. Not too much, though. Next, uh, crude oil, neutral bearish. Next, uh, soybean meal, um, looking for a little bit more downside correction, but the trend is up and there's damn good support below the market. So we're looking for a buy signal, oh, I would say at 440-ish. Next, corn. We caught a very good high a few weeks ago that lasted a few days and a low before that. A couple of damn good signals. 
lately we got overbought and we're slipping off today again since that overbought condition last week. No surprise. Uh, we could come down to 648, but mostly this is a giant big sideways, maybe pennant formation. Next, Coco. Um, neutral. Next, we've got soybean oil, also a big pennant formation. Caught the last low beautifully, uh, but I'm not sure here. Which I have to be neutral. Big sideways here. Live cattle uh, is in a bull trend, no pun intended. And we had a great bicycle back here on September 29th. We did get oversold. I talked about it starting to work its way higher. It did enter, uh, back up into some support which is just fine and dandy. I think we're going to see new highs here coming up pretty quick. Um, buy your 4th of July steak now. <laughs> uh, I do expect to see new highs for the trend. Next. Um, natural gas. A bearish, but it got oversold off and on for the last few weeks. So it's chewing its way down, not too fast, but every time it gets a little oversold, it bounces a little bit. And that's exactly where we got today relative to yesterday. That's Friday and Thursday of last week. So I'm looking for lower levels slowly. Next, uh, we've got high-grade copper, got overbought, was overbought for several days. Finally, looks like it's turning around. <coughs> Excuse me. Today's rally high uh, didn't hold, and it closed around unchanged. So I'm looking for it to slip off a little bit more, but the trend is up. I would like to get a buy signal around the 4.0 area. Next, wheat. Bearish, looking for new lows. We made new lows. Uh, the trend is down. And I think we're going to see below uh, 710 easily in the next uh, few days. Bearish, next. Uh, same comments. We got oversold. We did have a little bit of a bounce. It was right back up to the resistance level. Yesterday's high and today's high. Looks like they're almost exactly the same. And it could make a new low for the move anytime now. I'm bearish. Next, coffee. Bearish also. Now it's had that nice little rally I was talking about, and it's back up into resistance. So it may not go up too much more. I'm thinking maybe back up to 164, which is, again, not very much more of a rally. We're at 158 and a half on, today, mar on today's market at the moment. So um, looking for a sell signal. Trend is down. Next. Uh, trend is obviously up lately, and I don't know why I've got that tucked away at the top of the screen. So let's re resize this. Good. Got overbought. Again, looking for a little correction. And I talked about this chart as we started the futures area of charts, and this is gold. So I'm now going to put that back into place. And Forex. Slight new high for the move in the euro dollar on this rally, but... It looks like it's going to be closing below the previous highs. Now, that is not good. That is a sign of weakness after washing out buy stops of some sort. And I'm looking for a downside correction. We were overbought for four days in a row and then almost got overbought. Well, we did, excuse me, get overbought again today. So I think we're going to have another correction. And I think it could come down to about 1.058 maybe in that ballpark. Sure. Next. Um, oh, got to do this. Dollar index. Um, same thing in the opposite. So rally back up to 103.4 uh, area. Looks very plausible. And then down some more. Next. We've got the um, Japanese, U.S. dollar to the Japanese yen. We had a buy signal a couple of days ago on Wednesday of last week. It's working fine. I have no problems with the way it's been acting whatsoever. We came close to getting stopped out, but we did not. And now all of the price action since the buy signal is equal to or below us. So it's making some progress, doing fine, looking for more of a rally, at least up to 135, hopefully more. Next. Oops, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. And uh, Aussie to the US dollar. We got the bottom of this market way back in October with four buy signals, two of which were great. One of which was eh, and the other one didn't work. So um, now we got over what last week, had a little dip, coming back up again strong. Trend is up. I think we could see 0.71 and a half very quickly. 
but then it's going to get overbought. So next, U.S. dollar to Canada, sideways, but we did get a buy signal. Our low today is slightly below our uh, STS smart trailing stop, which did get hit. So we have a losing trade, a little bit of a loss in the last two or three days here. Um, too bad. But I have to mention, these buy signals and sell signals sometimes cluster. Here are two of them within a few weeks. So I think this market is trying to bottom out. The overall long-term trend is still up. This particular signal didn't work out as uh, the way I would have liked. Um, ER1 probably made some money because it buys it buys when the market on the same day of the signal makes a new high for bull, bullish signals. So it had a day and a half, so to speak, of profitable potential, but not much profit. ER3 did not work. Now, um, next symbol is dollar Swiss franc, new lows for the trend last week, popping back up into resistance a little bit. I like what I see. I'm looking for lower levels. The last buy signal here didn't work either on this particular symbol. Eh, for a day and a half, it did, or a day or so. This was a whopper. It was a great one. That was a great sell signal. That was a good bullish one. I'm making excuses for being right some of the time. And this is a really great bullish one as well. And eh, we lost a little on that sell signal. Let's go to the last one here, euro to the pound. No signals lately. Got overbought. Sideways trading range, a little bit of a broadening pattern in here. So we need one more third, fifth high. It's that's a one, two, three, four, five. If it's going to have a broadening pattern or reverse pennant, you could also call it that if you wanted. But that's fairly rare. I think we're going to have a little bit more of a dip. I'm neutral. Not sure what to say here. Sectors, real quick. I'm going to fly by these. Remember, a lot of these gave us sell signals a couple of days ago when the stock market indexes um gave us uh in the qqq a sell signal which didn't work so let's look at the um symbols here the first one is going to be x excuse me x l p and no signal next we have a bearish signal we didn't get stopped out this particular point <coughs> and the market's closing about unchanged um and we are now trading a little bit below 400 on the spider at 399.10 ish so only up three and a third. And that's not a lot with an hour and 10 minutes to go. So I'm keeping my eye on that. If it closes weak or with red, meaning lower on the day, that would not be bullish at all. And that would kind of confirm, well, I, want, I don't want to use the word confirm. That would definitely strengthen the likelihood that I'm still going to get that break before the end of the month. Next symbol here in the sector area is SMH, overbought, don't chase it up. That implies it's gonna slip back down a bit, but the trend is up. Next, we had a sell signal, it didn't work. We stopped out, small loss. We had a sell signal, we have not gotten stopped out, came awfully close. Let's see what happens with this in reference to also, you know, the stock market indexes. And now the uh, spider is 399, double zero, 398 now, 90. So we're slipping a bit. Next sector, up against resistance, not overbought. We were a week or so ago. I think it's going to slip back a little bit. Next, neutral. Next, um, bearish, overbought. We had one sell signal that didn't work a few days ago last week when the Qs had its signal, which didn't work. Next, ne uh, neutral. Next, we did not quite get to the official, and today's the last day, uh, new short price, the red dots. So ER1 may very well still be short because it always, again, gets into the trade the day it turns green or red, and it does not wait for retracement like ER3 does for a few days. So we are, missed the new short, and I'm looking for it to go lower. Next. No comment. Next. Slightly bearish. Looking for lower levels. This is almost down to, uh, it's down one tick on the day at the moment. So if this doesn't hold up, uh, we could have a serious break coming. Next. And a minor double top. XLU is the next one. Uh, we're looking at a test of resistance and now lower on the day by a slight bit. I think this could slip off some more. And it might even start a little bit of a downtrend of sorts. Hmm. 
So I'm modestly bearish. Next. Um, this is XTL. No comment, really. I might even take this out of the group. It's not that widely uh, traded. The volatility is not the best. So uh, XTL. Next. We just barely missed the new short uh, trigger price, but ER1 could still be short, as I said before. ER3 has missed it by just a hair today, and that's the last chance today. So I'm looking for it to go south. Let's see what happens here. Spiders back up above 399 by a squeak, just a few ticks. So we got a little bit of a benchmark at the moment, 399. We'll see what happens in the next few minutes. Next. Um, failure to ho hold new highs. There's a little bit of a bearish tinge to this because of the ability to go through the tops of before resistance, not stay up there and turn back down. So I'm looking for a little correction here. Next, VNQ. Short officially, ER1 and ER3, closing apparently about where we got short or maybe slight little tiny loss. Um, I think it's going to head south. I got a good, so far, sell signal uh, last week. Next. Same comment here, except we missed the new short by just a hair. Uh, these are looking a little bearish. The fact that they can't quite get the new shorts off on ER3s and that they're not holding their strength very well. Uh, E-mini now, 398.70. Next. Um, we got stopped out today on a previous short sale signal last Wednesday. So a little loss, but again, we'll see what the next few days bring. This has a gap today. That could be an exhaustion gap. It depends on how it gets closed in the next few days. So I'm looking for it to come back down and close the gap at a minimum and see what happens after that. Next and last, XME. We're short. So far, so good. Looks like it's going to close lower than yesterday when we got short yesterday. And I've got no problem here. Looking for new lows below 54 probably in the ballpark of 49. That's it for sectors. And again, questions, email me at info at ersignals.com. Thanks, Dan Ehrlich. Have a very profitable day. Keep your eye on the stock market indexes.